Hello. Okay, time to go over the difference between lambdas and procs. It turns out that a lambda is actually just a subclass. Well, it's just a special type of proc, not a subclass. But anyway, just a refresher. To create a lambda, I'm just going to do the shorthand way. You just go like this. You can pass in your block, or if you have arguments, you do this. Yeah. So we create our lambda, we got our arguments inside the parentheses, and we have our block here. And then to use our lambda, we just call it. So again, lambdas are anonymous functions that are stored in variables. So we'll run this. File's called YouTube. Oh my god, why did Ruby YouTube.rb? Sorry about that. Oh, all right, well, this actually does bring me to something. So, you see that my Lambda, it has one argument message. I actually didn't provide the message, and I got an error. So, we'll put in our message, hello world. But while we're at it, we're going to create a proc. So, my underscore proc. I don't know if I showed you how to create procs, but there are two ways to do it. You can either do proc.new and pass in a block or you could do that. So I like the shorthand version um, just because less stuff. So we'll call our proc, but this time we'll call it without an argument, what we did before. What the heck just happened? Oh, that's so dumb. So I have message the variable shorthand, and then I have message up here. There we go. Wow. Um, so we get hello world, and then we see that our, well, I'm teaching you about debugging at least. Um, we see that when we forget a variable in our prop or a uh, argument of our prop, we don't get any errors, and that's one of the main differences between procs and lambdas. So when a lambda is provided an insufficient or too many arguments, the program crashes, while a proc will just ignore it. So if you're using an anonymous function and you're accepting a variable number of arguments, I would go with procs, just because they won't cause your program to crash. They'll kind of just smoothly skip over your, your errors. Another difference between these two things, these procs and lambdas, has to do with functions. So we'll create a lambda test, and we'll create a proc test. And I forgot to use def. It did it automatically. So we'll create our lambda. I don't like calling them that equals Oh, geez. And inside of our functions, we're going to return strings. String inside of lambda. And then from our function, we're just going to return hello, where inside of a function. We're going to do the same thing our proc function. But this time, we're going to wait. We got to call this. So yeah, I don't know if I reminded you, but to access uh, these anonymous functions, we got to call call on them. You can also just append call to the end instead of doing this. But yes, call is how we call our lambdas and procs. So p equals proc. We're just going to return inside of the proc, and we will call our proc. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to put out each of these functions. On the screen. So the first one we see hello we're inside of the function. The second one we see hello inside of the prop, the proc. So what it looks like here is that this code did not run and this code did not run. 
So it is true that in this, when we use a proc inside of a function, if we call return, the proc will return from the function's context. So that's the most important thing you need to know. Procs return from their current context. While in a Lambda, when we call return, it hands over control back to the function context. So this code did run, but because there was a return statement, it just, um, it's sort of like exited the Lambda and returned back to the function. Let me try this. I wonder what that does. Okay, so yeah, so it does, it does run, the code does run but um, it just exits the Lambda. So Lambdas have their own local return context, while procs just return from the function's context. This means that if you're using an anonymous function and you want to decide between a Lambda and a proc, if you're using them inside a method, you're more than likely want to go, I mean, it depends what you want to do, but you just need to know that a lambda, when you call return, it exits back into the method, while when you call return inside of a proc, it exit it uh, that acts as if it were the function's return method. So that's an easier way of saying it. Procs act as if they are the function's return statement. So a good question you might have is, well, what if we return a proc? What if we use a return statement of proc without a method? So we can do this. Proc says, boom, proc.call, so we'll call our proc. And nothing really happens. Um, that's weird. Why? Well, the easiest way for me to explain this, and the way I understand it, is that there is no nothing to return um, from the global context. If we did this, it works, which is kind of weird because returns are technically implicit in Ruby. So I'm thinking, isn't this, isn't there like an invisible return over here? But I guess not. Um, so I guess it's kind of a void function. I'm not really sure. But all you need to know is that if we're using procs outside methods, you cannot use the return statement. All right, that's it for this video. I am going to have to think of some exercises to do with procs, procs and lambdas. Um, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my Medium blog, all about Ruby, Ruby on Rails and Flutter. Check out my awesome podcast. And of course, keep educating yourself with these videos. Um, I'm going to start doing Ruby on Rails videos as well. Let's go. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later. Let me think of some exercises.